Welcome back. Today's video is going to be my 13 and 14 weeks of pregnancy update, or my bump date. Um, the last couple of weeks it has been pretty crazy. Um, I have had roller coaster of many <laughs> symptoms and feelings, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, I will say that right now I am 14 weeks and 4 days, and um, I am feeling a little bit better. This morning I woke up and I felt awesome, like no nausea, no headache, I was all excited. I have had a headache almost every single day for like four weeks straight, or a headache for part of the day every single day um, for the last four weeks. So it has been pretty unfortunate. I've been trying so hard not to take Tylenol. I've still been doing my um, warm baths as recommended by my midwife um, with Epsom salt and also using like my essential oils like lavender oil and peppermint to help with the nausea. And that seems to be um, something I really enjoy. And then my dermatologist has recommended that I wash my hair every single day. So I've been taking my warm baths at night and washing my hair. And I actually have been really enjoying that. I mean, I don't mind showers, but like my bubble bath or my bath I actually look forward to. So that's kind of nice for a change. You know, showering feels like something I have to do. The bath feels like something I enjoy. So around 8 o'clock every night, I kind of make it my way upstairs. I get in my bath and, you know, by 9 I'm in bed and I read my baby book. Uh, my favorite thing from this stage has been that my husband will draw me my bath and um, he'll sit in there with me or he'll read to me and he'll read like the what to expect when you're expecting or the Mayo Clinic's guide to pregnancy to me or um, the updates on my apps. I have like seven pregnancy apps on my phone so he'll read to me what those apps have for the day for like what the baby's up to and what's happening to my body and we were actually laughing because he was reading one day I don't remember which book or what part, but it was the part that was addressed to the daddies. And so he was like, do you want me to read this? I'm like, sure, what the heck. So um, it was basically telling him what to expect from me. And I was cracking up because it was so right. It was like, sometimes she wants you to be very close to her, but don't touch her, <laughs> but not to touch her. And I was like, it's true. Like, I, I don't want him far away. Like, I want him near me. But like, when he just like touches me, like, he'll just, like, put his arm around me, and he'll just, like, do this repeatedly while we're watching TV, and I'm like, stop it. You know, like, I get so frustrated and annoyed easily, and I'm like, so I laughed, because that was very true. Um, it also said, like, you know, keep up with her mood swings and her crying, or keep up with um, that she changes her mind a lot about food. Like, I'll ask him to make me something, and then he'll make it for me for dinner or something, and then I'll be like, ew, I can't even, like, no. Like, I just can't. Or something that I've eaten every single day that I always like, like oatmeal. One day I'll vomit it, and then from then on I can't eat oatmeal anymore. And he'll be like, you like oatmeal. You've eaten every oatmeal every single day. It's healthy. I made it for you. I'm like, you know, I'm over it. Never want to see oatmeal again in my life. You know, that kind of thing. Um, so this last week, it was interesting. So like 11 and a half weeks to 12 and a half weeks, I had like seven days straight with no vomiting. I was like, all right, it's getting better. I've heard at the end of first trimester, it's going to be good. Here I am in my second trimester. So from weeks... 12 and a half to 14 and a half, basically, I have been a vomiter again. I don't know what happened, but um, I had like several good days. I have good days here and there. Um, but then I have had days where I've thrown up four or five times on the same day, like Wednesday with the day that I turned 14 weeks, I threw up like four or five times that day. And I was not happy. Twice <laughs> on the drive to work while driving, I didn't even have a chance to pull over. Luckily I had a grocery bag in the front seat because it was empty anyway. So I just threw up into that. But I mean, I was literally like driving through an intersection. I was like, what am I going to do? Pull over here? Like, no. So I just tried to, yeah. So that's awful. Um, and then when I get home, I just wish I could vomit. I don't feel well. I'm still really sensitive to smells. But so this week, Monday and Tuesday, I did not throw up. Wednesday, I threw up a lot. And then Thursday and Friday and Saturday, I did not throw up. So maybe you are getting better. Maybe that Wednesday was like my last hurrah with the throwing up. I hope so, guys. I really do. I am so sick of it. This morning, um, it's Sunday morning. I feel really good. I don't feel sick at all. I don't have a headache. Um, I woke up naturally at 5.30 this morning. I had already gotten eight hours of sleep, and I felt good. I feel like I had caffeine. I feel like the old me. I feel happy and peppy and everything. So this is a great feeling. I hope it lasts all day. Um, I've just been really careful. So, so as far as foods go, I pretty much now have learned I can't stomach red meat right now for some reason, but chicken seems to be okay. Um, and I've also learned to quit while I'm ahead, so I don't overeat anymore. I eat just enough to keep the nausea at bay, 
and that's it. Because when I overeat or when I indulge in something that I really love and I eat too much of it, then I'm sick. So it's not worth it. It like makes me, like for example, we went to my favorite Mexican food place. I ate a massive plate of food, but like honestly I'm not gaining weight, so that's a whole other story. So I was like, it's cool, like I finally feel good. Yay, I had my Mexican food. And then I threw up massive quantities of Mexican food. So I'm like, you know what? We're gonna have just a little bit of everything <laughs> and that's fine. And then if I do get sick, it won't be that bad. So I've been eating more frequently, smaller meals. Um, I've been sticking kind of staying away from the spicy food, salsa and things like that. Um, I've been trying not to have a lot of sauces. I've been eating everything pretty bland and plain. I don't like a lot of seasonings. I have been liking starchy things like potatoes and french fries and things of that nature because um, unfortunately that is just what goes down well. I, I have not thrown up when I've had potatoes or french fries so sometimes I just have a plain baked potato and that's that and that's my entire lunch and it's great. I don't have a problem with that, so, um, feeling pretty good, I just feel kind of, you know, weary, because appreciate the days that I feel good, because I know that I won't always feel good in pregnancy, there will be days when I have indigestion, there will be days when I'm constipated, and there will be days when I have hemorrhoids, and there, I mean, I've hear, heard these things, like swelling, and very uncomfortable back pain, and things like that, so when I don't have a headache, when I feel good, I want to really appreciate it, and I do, I try to, you know, get out and walk. Well, I felt really good Saturday, yesterday, so we went hiking, and this is something we do all the time. Um, in Arizona, it's still in the 70s and 80s right now in November, so we went hiking, took the dog. We were walking on the basic, like, the 10-minute we just started. We weren't even up to the part where there's, like, big boulders to climb or anything, um, and I twisted my ankle. It's the same ankle I twist every year or two. And I have done it so many times. This ankle is just kind of weaker. I don't wear a brace because I haven't done it in a couple years. Now I'm wearing this really sexy ankle brace. Um, not my favorite. And I'm hobbling around. But the good news is, as I fell, I did not fall. Fall. Like, I twisted my ankle and I kind of like voluntarily like rolled and sat on my butt. So I'm very happy about that. I've read in my books that like, unless you fall really hard and get a direct blow to your stomach, usually the baby is fine. But for me personally, like, I would have called my doctor and been like, can you just, like, check me out? Can you everything? So what I did that day was, of course, I did the rice, rest, ice, compression, and elevation. As I do every time, you know, I wore my brace, I iced it off and on, um, elevated it, and all those things that I know to do because I've done this before and I have gone to the doctor. I've had bruising and swelling, and I'm very familiar with how to treat my ankle. But this time around, I can't take any good pain meds. Just, I took Tylenol once this week. And that's hard because I feel like crap like a lot. <laughs> so I didn't, I only took Tylenol once um, and that was the day that I hurt my ankle. But I didn't need to take it the rest of the day because this happened at like 9 or 10 in the morning. So it's not like, um, you know, I didn't take it at 2 in the afternoon when that one wore off. I was able to pretty much stomach it. So I have done way worse on this ankle before um, where I couldn't walk, where I had to like crawl everywhere and use crutches and stuff. So this time around I was able to like limp my way back. So it's not that bad. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of unfortunate and I feel blessed that, you know, I didn't fall fall So I know the baby's fine and I also came home and used the Doppler on my stomach And I found the baby's heartbeat really quickly and it's fine So that makes me feel good and then I use the Doppler again the next day just to make sure everything's fine um, I've used the Doppler probably like twice a week um, this last few weeks So that's enough for me to feel like it was a worthy investment. I feel like peace of mind. And going four weeks between appointments in early pregnancy is really hard for me. I don't know about you guys, but like, I don't know. I just like, four weeks seems like forever. And I'm getting really jealous because a lot of people that are pregnant at the same stage as me right now already know the gender of their baby. And I could totally do that. I could go opt to get an elective ultrasound or you know, blood work or whatever for the chromosomes and get the genetic testing and find out if it's a girl or boy, but, you know, I really just, like, don't want to know. Um, I don't want to pay extra for that, and they're going to tell me, so in about four weeks, basically mid-December, I'm going to find out. Um, I haven't decided how I'm going to do the reveal on this channel, of course, but I will. I want to do, like, a gender reveal party, and I definitely want to do, like, Christmas cards featuring the baby of some way. I don't know if I'm going to do an ultrasound picture or something. Um, maybe I'll show you those. Uh, when I figure that out, I want to do the gender reveal, I want to plan the nursery, and a lot of that is kind of dependent on finding out the gender. And my doctor said 19 weeks. And I'm like, okay, so I look at a calendar, I'm like, dang, 19 weeks is December 21st. Ugh, like that's a long time from now. Um, and so I'm not going to really have any time 
after that between then and Christmas. So that's cool. I mean, whatever. It's not a big deal. Uh, that I have five more months to like think about it. So, eh, it's fine. Um, okay, so I've also been craving randomly like apples. Like I don't eat red apples. I don't. I just don't. I always get the tart like Granny Smith ones, the green ones. And then this last couple weeks, I've been craving red apples. So I bought red apples and I ate them. Like, I never eat red apples. I've also craved orange juice and I've craved Taco Bell. Um, they're cheesy bean and rice burritos still. I love those things. I'm just sticking, steering clear of the red meat. Burgers, no thank you. I'll have the chicken. <laughs> and it seems to be okay now. So that's good. I'll probably start phasing in red meats again soon. Um, I also tried to have one fufu coffee where it was like, very sweet like probably a 400 calorie cup of coffee like at a at a restaurant with whipped cream and chocolate syrup and the whole thing and I still didn't like it so that tells me I'm not quite ready to do coffee again and as you can see no coffee I'm just like hyper I feel good I'm a morning person guys this is the third video I filmed today and it's 8 a.m. on Sunday I'm a morning person what can I say I like mornings when I feel good this is my favorite time of the day um what else oh I don't really like chocolate right now or like chocolate and peanut butter stuff like cake and um, desserts with chocolate and peanut butter. Not really my thing. I like fruity desserts. Like, I love fruity candy right now. We ended up throwing away our Halloween candy because I'm not into Reese's. I'm just not into chocolate bars right now. Very uncharacteristic of me, let me just say that. Okay, so weight gain. Um, I'm not gaining weight. So I think I'm still up about two or three pounds since the beginning. Um, and I am almost 15 weeks, so that's pretty good. Between my eight week appointment and my 11 week appointment, it was like three, three and a half weeks there, um, I only gained half a pound. And she wasn't concerned because I am in like that higher BMI bracket. Um, my total weight gain they're expecting is 15 to 25 pounds. So to be at like two or three after the first trimester, like no big deal. Well then from weeks 11 to 14, I actually lost a pound. Um, I'm just throwing up multiple times a day does that, you know, but I started feeling a little better this week and I might be up like back a half a pound or a pound. Like I'm pretty much the same. So like from weeks eight to 14 or 15, there might be about a one pound difference, nothing major. So considering I was eating fast food a lot and eating crap, like I don't eat vegetables and fruit and stuff very often now, but I'm trying, I'm getting back in there. Um, so considering all of that, it's pretty nice that I'm not gaining a lot of weight. Um, I still feel really good. So let me show you my bump shots. I'm going to show you week nine real quick from the front and the side. And that way I can show you this is the week 14 from the front and the side. Now I can tell. I don't think very many other people can tell. Um, if I don't want you to be able to tell, I, you don't need to be able to tell. Like I can dress in a strategic way so you can't tell I'm pregnant. Where if you wear those dresses that have like the line right under the boobs and then they flare out in the belly, I might look a little pregnant. Or like if I stand from the side and I stick it out, you know, I can look pregnant. But basically these days I have the choice whether I want to look pregnant or not. I have the choice whether I want to wear maternity clothes or not. So far I am still able to wear my wedding rings. I am still um, not swollen. I don't have to wear maternity clothes. But I am um, noticing like a couple times last week when I was going to work, I wore a skirt that has like a zipper um, up the back, you know. Two different skirts and one time I had to like unzip it like I, I tried it on in the morning and it was fine I didn't remember it being like a tight skirt or anything and like I said I've only gained a couple pounds I didn't think it was a big deal but I guess part of it is my belly's bigger a little but the other thing is like I just don't like things on my belly right now like I just find that very uncomfortable let me know if you had that too in your early pregnancy but um, so what I did was unzipped it a couple of inches and my shirt was long enough that nobody could tell so I wore it unzipped most of the day um, and then also another day that same week, I was just really uncomfortable. By the time I got in my car to drive home from work at like 4 p.m., I was like, <laughs> and I unzipped my skirt and I was uncomfortable. So I'm still able to wear them. I'm still able to zip them, but they're getting to the point where I'm like, um, as far as purchases go for the baby, I have not made any. I have not bought any more maternity clothes. I have gotten some gifted to me. Uh, my mom's gone garage sailing or like to the you know, used clothing stores and stuff. And I have gotten some used clothing. I'm still in the market for some good flats. That is getting expedited now because I have a sore ankle and I usually wear high heels to work. And I'm like, I think it's time. So I'm gonna buy them like a half size bigger than I normally do probably um, for the ankle brace and because I expect my feet to get a little bigger. Um, just a pair, maybe like a black pair of flats or something to get me through working. Um, I do like sandals when I'm at home and Arizona is not that cold, at least not yet. Um, 
so yeah, um, this next coming week is our one year anniversary, uh, one year wedding anniversary, and we have an appointment. On the day I turn 15 weeks, I have a midwife appointment. It's not the kind of appointment where they're going to do like an ultrasound or anything. It's just a checkup. You know, they'll find the baby's heartbeat with a Doppler and send me on my way. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, so I will mention it now. I did get my lab results back and everything for the cystic fibrosis test. I am not a carrier of that. And the other nuchal translucency tests and other chromosomal tests we've done and everything was normal. So that's good. Um, I haven't had any other doctor's appointments since I last talked to you guys or gotten any other results. So everything so far seems to be checking out and I've been finding the baby's heartbeat. Like I said, a couple times a week, it's always been about 140 to 155 or so. So that makes me happy. Um, yeah, I'm still wanting to do that Q&A video on pregnancy. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um... If you have any cute recommendations for gender reveal, gender reveal party, uh, things like that, or nursery themes, name ideas, please leave them in the comments below. Let me know your birth stories if you had any other symptoms. Oh, another thing. I did have, last time I had this, uh, the, in my week 11 and 12 update, I mentioned how when I sneeze, my, um, I get like, it hurts like in my uterus area. And I, somebody commented that it was round ligament pain, and I googled it, and I was like, oh my gosh, it totally is. When you look up round ligament pain, it says stretching, it can be sharp, quick pains, like when you change positions, when you laugh, sneeze, cough. Um, like when I went from sitting to standing, I got like a sharp pain underneath my like belly, and I was like, oh, and then it was gone. And I was like, I feel fine. That's weird. Um, so I totally have round ligament pain now. I'm still not sleeping with the pregnancy pillow. I do have one. Uh, but I've just been finding, more than anything, my boobs hurt. So when I'm trying to sleep, if I try to sleep on my stomach, I'm very uncomfortable. I have nightmares, like, where, because they hurt so bad that, like, in my subconscious, I have these nightmares that um, I'm my nipple's getting sliced off. Like, I'm not even kidding you. They hurt that bad in, like, real life that my dreams are about them. And so I can't, I can't, I don't like to sleep on my belly anymore. And I have to sleep in a bra or I feel like I, it just helps, you know. Um, so that's helping me not sleep on my belly as much, but uh, I'm still a belly sleeper by nature, so I'm trying to like kind of slowly transition myself to a side sleeper. I don't like using the pregnancy pillow because it takes up so much of the bed between my husband and I and the dog in our queen bed. It's a little tight, and I don't, I don't want to put everybody out just for my maternity pillow if I don't really need it. Like when I need it, I'll use it. And I asked my midwife about that, and she said. You'll, your body will let you know before you actually need to stop sleeping on your back or your belly that it's uncomfortable. She's like, before it becomes a problem, your body will let you know. And I can already see that happening with my belly sleeping. Like, my body's like, this isn't comfortable. Don't do it anymore. You don't like it. And I'm kind of slowly able to change. And it gives me time to transition into that naturally um, rather than, like, forcing myself to sleep a certain way, which I don't feel like you sleep as well. Um, I have been sleeping pretty well. My scalp is a lot better. Um... I've been able to sleep a steady nine hours a night. My scalp itches, but it's not like excruciating anymore. My nails have been growing really fast. I feel like the part of my hair that isn't color treated, because I have not been heat processing my hair. I think I've heat process my, processed my hair like once in the last six weeks. Um, I have not been heat processing it, or I haven't dyed it in over a year since before our wedding last November. So like this part that's in the ponytail is dyed, and then the part at the roots is all natural. So you can kind of see, I'll try to show you the color difference my natural hair versus my um, roots, or my roots which is natural and versus the ends. So the part that's natural is like really shiny and glossy looking and pretty and uh, the roots look great. So I really wish I could just dye the rest of my hair but I'm gonna let it go because it looks really natural. Like nobody can tell that it's been dyed and I wanna just be able to let it go naturally. I get a couple gray hairs a month but nothing that I can't handle so that is it for my weeks 13 and 14 pregnancy update. I hope you guys found this video fun to watch. Don't forget to comment down below um, anything about your pregnancies, um, gender reveal ideas, Q&A questions, stuff like that. Thanks for watching. Bye.